Hey people, Anthony, 4 before days. So let's talk EGTs. This is a really important one that uh, you might be surprised with the findings what we've got here because uh, at the end of the day, the faster you go, the cooler your uh, EGTs are. Now, on the scan gauge up here, it's the bottom row. Okay, so these are the things you want to take, take note of. Bottom left, EGT one's the main one we're going to watch, but you can have a look at the whole row at the bottom if you like as a general guide. And the second one up on the right, the EGR flow, exhaust gas recirculation. Okay, let's quickly just let everybody know what that there for in case they missed it in the other videos. We've got a whole heap of playlists. I highly recommend you watch, check, go out through those playlists and have a look. One of them's called EGR information and cleaning, whatever. Now you can see it's on zero now, that means it's closed. Now you can see it opening again, 40%, 50%, 30%, whatever it is. Okay, now, as we go up and down some hills, it's going to change a little bit, so that's good. A um, couple of statistics we got here for you. We've uh, got the cruise control set on 125 k's an hour at the moment, which is an actual around about 120. You can see there in the middle of the scan gauge. So cruising along on the highway quick bit of information yesterday we had it set on 115 so that was approximately 110 and the EGTs were sitting at about 500 degrees right now today we're sitting on 125 on the cruise control for a while now um, and the thing is the EGTs were been sitting a lot about 400 okay now we've had a slight headwind pick up recently so that'll increase it about you know to from 400 410 420 not much wind but just i hope you take a note of those egt see about the 450 mark there right no problem okay and that's with the egr open 25 percent open right so that's the first thing you need to take note of now eventually we're going to get to a point where that egr percentage closes off to zero i'm not sure exactly when it's going to be but until then I'll talk to you and explain about why the EGR is there, but we'll just cut out of that and talk about the results you'll see here um, in relation to the EGR and how it actually, the EGR system's actually doing the opposite to what it's designed to do. So besides being a filthy problem and the engine just, how did you put it before? It's eating its own crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's eating its own crap. Yeah, which everybody knows, and uh, in doing so, yeah, it's just a bad idea. It's not even helping with the whole situation. Okay, so what's it there for? Well, you keep an eye on the, uh, you know, EGTs. EG, exhaust gas recirculation, right? E EGR, this one up on the right, second one up. So the idea is that you are under lighter loads, or all the time if you could, but, so let me just say, firstly, we know that the cool, efficient burn is the cold air from the intercooler. That's why the vehicle's got an intercooler. So it's got a turbo that makes things a bit hot and that's not ideal. So they put an intercooler to cool the air down again because that works best. And of course, clean air for your engine through the air filter. But then somebody went, oh, well, EGR, right? So if you inject or allow entry of some inert gases, so hot exhaust gases that are, as you can see there, 450 degrees at the moment. If you bring some of that into the combustion, that cools the combustion, basically in other words, makes it crappy and less efficient, not as hot burn, supposedly, um, to cool the combustion, which reduces nitrogen oxides. Nitrogen oxides is the bad stuff. It's the killer, cancer, heart attack, stroke, all that sort of thing. So we do want to reduce that if we could, if there was a way to do it. The other system is add blue, okay? Now, the more power and torque and everything you make out of the diesel, the more nitrogen oxides you're gonna get. Doesn't matter how clean running it is really, right? You can still see 450. This video is not working out exactly how I wanted it to because it's not doing what it was doing just before I started the video for the last hour or two. But I will solve that problem before the end of the video. We'll increase the speed, and um, if we need to, to get that EGR to close, and you'll see what happens. So, so you get it. So they want to add hot gases to cool the combustion, which reduces nitrogen oxide, supposedly, in theory. Okay, it's not working, okay? Because you can see right here, the EGTs at the bottom, 
they're up around 450. If you've got high EGTs, of course, you've got high combustion temps and plenty of nitrogen oxides. There's no issue there. Now, if you had the EGTs drop down around 2 300, then you know you've got a cooler combustion and happy days. So the dam system doesn't work anyway. So it's caking up your intake. It's very inefficient because the hot air they're injecting is, like it says, exhaust gas recirculation. Exhaust gas, yes, what comes out your tailpipe? And no, they don't take it from after the DPF because that would be clean and there wouldn't be any soot because you've got a DPF there. They take it from before the DPF. How dumb are they? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? How dumb are these engineers that got their piece of paper and they work at these places and they come up with these ideas and the bosses obviously listen to them. It's just crazy because this is what's happening, okay? So EGR, bad idea. Now, what we're going to need to do to get that EGR to close is increase the speed on the cruise control a little bit. So what we've done now is set the cruise control to uh, 135, which will bring us up to approximately 130 k's an hour. And you can see, you'd think you'd have hotter, okay? Of course you're gonna have hotter EGTs going faster, aren't you, right? Everybody knows, you get faster you go, the hotter the EGTs are gonna be. But you can see the speed in the middle there, 130, and we are going up a hill, and you can see it's already down to 420. Look at the EGTs, 420, right? We're going up a hill. Wait till it flattens off a bit, right? So this is a slide uphill, right? Let's, uh, you know, let's just give it a sec. Let it flatten off, and you'll see the higher speed, because the EGR is shut, that stupid EGR system, that stupid idea, all EGR systems are a bad idea in my opinion. I've done a lot of this sort of thing where I watch these things. That's what I use scan tools and scan gauges for. And you tell me, based on averages from what you've seen, so look, the EGR's opening already. But see how it was dropping down towards 400? But now we've got a slight downhill, so the EGR's opened. And look, back up to 430, right? Sorry, I got, mate, just do the best you can holding that camera still, but you know, I know it's hard. Very difficult, because you know, at these sort of speeds, you know, and that bit of your spit stretch. How's your arm, mate? Is it all right? It's all. <laughs> um, okay, so basically, look at that. Back down to 406 at 130 kilometres an hour. Right? Can you believe that? Right? You better believe it. We're going up a hill now, so it's going to get a bit hotter on the hill. It's quite a hill, actually. Uh, quite a decent-sized hill, so that's where you're going to make heat on the hills. But I'm telling you now, I've been watching this thing for days, hours, weeks, months, and years. In this car, in the other vehicles, this is what I look at, this is what I do, and then I'll provide the real information to you. So you might want to subscribe, turn the bell on, so that you don't miss out on this important information that's getting you educated on the sort of stuff that you will not learn anywhere else. You won't read about it, you won't see it in a video, you won't really, I can't really under, you know, explain it in a post. Flat ground, 130 k's an hour, and we're down to 411, you know, around the 400 mark. Now, EJR is opening, you watch the temps go up, I promise you. See, look at it, 430, whatever. So that wraps that up so that you can see, butter bing, butter boom. Now, let's do the other thing here, right? Let's do the, uh, let's go, uh, let's go back to what we did the other day, 115 k's an hour, because this is, 115 on the speedo, that's about 110. You can see the speed there. And then you'll have a whole heap of EGR going on. And look at that. So you're running high EGTs of about 450 to 500, right? Even when, right? Even when you're traveling at 110 k's an hour. But I'm telling you, all, all yesterday, a couple of hours I was watching it, 500 degrees. Look at the one on the left, 460, 470 at 110. So if you think going slower, Oh, okay, if you drop your speed down to 70, 80, 90Ks, you're going to have heaps lower EGTs, right? So if you want to save your diesel engine and have cooler EGTs, if you believe that's what it is, then slow right down. And this is the whole point. Any highway driving, right, with a four-wheel drive, it's a brick, especially with a caravan, is going to create high EGTs and fatigue to the engine. Every engine's got the weakest point. Drive it far enough, get hundreds of thousands of kilometres on it, and something has got to give, okay? The best thing you can do is keep your maintenance Mickey Mouse top notch and understand things like this because, you know, seeing those EGs, look, that's not massive. You can get up to six, 700, we can really work it. But see, 477 at 110. 
If that surprised you, please let me know in the comments. And like I said, if you like the video, hit like, subscribe, turn the bell on, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.